Happy World Usability Day. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I bet you haven't heard that one before. Well, what is that, you ask? It's a first ever event that's pushing easy to use gadgets. Organizers hope it'll make tech companies simplify their products and make them user friendly. Elizabeth Rosenzweig of the Usability Professionals Association joins us now from Boston to explain this event. Now that's a mouthful. Elizabeth, good morning. Good morning, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So you want to pressure the tech world to make these gadgets more user friendly, why? That's right. Well, we feel that every citizen and customer has a right to expect products and services that are easy to use. And World Usability Day events are uh, planned all over the world to highlight how we can do this. So the basic message is, oh, go ahead. So basically, it's kind of like modeled after Earth Day, correct? That's exactly right. That we think that um, by, by raising awareness all over the world, we can help change the way products are developed. When Earth Day was started, I don't think any, but probably 25, 30 years ago, nobody really understood about recycling. And now you can go to even small third world countries and see that they're recycling. So that's our same model. Um, we feel that uh, from cell phones to call centers, um, customer service websites and more, there's countless opportunities to make things easier to use. So today, uh, World Usability Day, we have 100 locations in 30 different countries all over the world. Actually, World Usability Day is technically 36 hours, and we're in hour 19. So some so tech marketers started... might say, Elizabeth, sorry to interrupt you there, but some tech marketers might say, hey, you know what, it's our job to give you a device that does many things and makes your life a little bit simpler. You can at least be savvy enough to read the instruction book. What say you back? Well, the truth is that if I have to go through an instruction book, then I'm probably not going to be able to use everything that I need to. And there really is no reason why we can't develop products that, that people should be able to figure out without having to read the directions. Um, there's a whole slew of people who understand how to develop products that are usable, that are intuitive. There's all sorts of techniques and methods that we have. And it's actually not as hard as it sounds. And the truth is, is if that product developers could start working on this early in their product cycle, they'll actually save themselves money also and probably sell more products. Now, do you have an example of what you feel is probably a whiz-bang gadget that is user-friendly, easy to use and figure out? Well, the truth is I like the iPod. I mean, it's pretty simple. It may not be, you, you may not get it right immediately off the bat, but it's, it's, getting, it's getting better. The latest versions, you can just push a button, you can get your music, and it doesn't have lots of different buttons to, to figure out. It's got the basic click wheel. You, you, you basically have one or two places to click, get your music, and listen to it. It's a very nice example of an easy to use, nicely designed product. And they did a quite a bit of testing on people before they actually uh, put it out to market. All right, Elizabeth, thank you so much on this uh, first World Usability Day. Thank you for your information. You take care. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Well, obviously, somebody, a lot of people figured out how to at least use the VCR to rerun that Pacers brawl, the Pistons Pacers brawl from last year. So run our test first appearance on a basketball court this season was a whole lot different from that piece of tape. Will Salva has more on his return. Morning. Good morning to you, Robin Pacers star Ron Artest.